Hey guys, it's your boy Chunky C here. Today, I wanna show you a quick and simple little easy trick that you can do to set up a redundant battery system in your airplane. Plus, I'm gonna show you a little secret about the pins in your receiver that you may or may not know about. So stay tuned. All right guys, so through the years I have been looking, trying to research and trying to find the perfect uh, redundant aircraft RC system. I really uh, have gained a lot of knowledge through all the years of trying to, to figure out what's the best way to go about things and I'm wanting to start a video series to uh, share some of the information that I found, um, hopefully uh, help someone else out. There's not a lot of information out there on the internet. Um, unless you really like going into forums and listening to people uh, bicker back and forth about what's the best system, what's worked for them, and uh, which I'm not really into. That just kind of wastes a lot of hours reading. Um, YouTube is a great place. Uh, but I found a couple of different systems that I would like to talk about in a couple of setups. Um, but the first thing I want to talk about is really a redundant battery system that is easy to do that not a lot of people probably know that you can do it. I come from the old days. Uh, let me see if I can zoom in on this. Back in the day we had 72 megahertz and if you look you only had one battery port on your receiver. Um, back in the day we just thought you only could plug one battery into this one port and that was it. But that's not the case and I'm going to show you today. The pins that are on your receivers, the negative and the positive pins all run on a bus system. So what do I mean by a bus system? Bus means that they are all connected together. Even the ports that are on S port, S port. If you'll look at this um, FR Sky R8 Pro, you'll notice it doesn't list any battery ports. It just has channels one through eight, S bus in and S bus out, and that's all you get. When I first got these receivers, I was wondering what in the world. There's no battery port. I knew I could plug one in, but anywhere on any port but I just thought it was strange that they have completely done away with the battery port. So let me show you what I'm talking about. Let me get this set up, let me get my voltmeter, and I'll be right back. Alright guys, I'm back. I've got my fluke set up to do a continuity check um, so that whenever these two terminals touch, you're going to hear an audible alarm. As you'll hear it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you, let's see, let me start with this old Fataba here to be a little bit easier to do. You've got, a lot of folks don't know, but the middle wire, if you look at any of your servo leads, the middle wire is the positive wire. The reason why it's the middle is if you plug it in either way, if you reverse it, then the hot wire is always going to be in the middle. If they had it out here on the ground side, there would be a chance that if you flipped it, you would accidentally put a hot wire onto your signal pin and that would fry that, that output, that PWM output. So they keep that in the middle and they keep the ground over here and this is your signal. So let's start with the ground. This is the battery port right here. I'm gonna show you. If I put this in here, if I come over here all the way to the end, you should hear a beep. So that tells me that all of those pins are all on the same bus they're all connected so let me try the positive and I got the same thing now if I go up here to the PWM pins you'll notice as I go down the ports I don't get any I don't get any beeps that's because the signal pins are all individual they all have their same circuit because obviously they're running on different channels that is the reason why you can plug any battery, you can take your harness and plug it into any one of these switches that you have open 
and power the receiver. So stick around. I'm going to do another setup. I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. I'll be right back. All right, guys, we are back. Um, would you see what I have set up here? I've got two battery setups with two switches. Totally redundant, totally separate from one another. Now, I wanted to use the R8 Pro because I wanted to demonstrate that this has no battery ports. It's one through eight. Okay, you have your channel PWM ports one through eight, but you also have um, S bus on the bottom. You have an S bus in and an S bus out. I have actually used both of those ports before as my battery ports because all of my PWM ports were filled up with servo hookups. Um, one thing I do want to point out that this is a good redundant battery setup. Um, the majority of the failures that I have seen through time, through all my years of flying, it's always been either a battery failure or signal loss uh, during during flight. Um, with that being said, this is a good redundant battery system, and I'm going to show you why. You have two separate systems, two batteries, two switches that are completely independent from each other. Now, if I turn one on, you can see it's powered up through the S bus port. You got power. I'm going to turn that off. I'm going to come over here and turn this one on. This one is actually plugged into number eight, and we got power. So to simulate, I'm gonna cut both of them on. Let's say you're flying, and let's say this battery right here just decide, decides to just die and just give up and say, I don't wanna work anymore, so we'll turn that off. You still have power coming from this battery, okay? I'm gonna cut that back on. Same with this one over here. The battery and the receiver still has power. Now, if something happens and both batteries decide to die, that's just a bad day and there's nothing you can do about that. But this is a good, like I said, a good battery redundant system. There is, it is not a completely redundant system simply because you have one receiver. And if this receiver fails, it doesn't matter how many batteries you have hooked up to it, it's gonna be a bad day. So with that being said, if you're concerned about batteries and you don't mind drilling an extra uh, cutting an extra hole in the side of your plane for a switch. Uh, the extra weight from an extra battery with an extra switch. It's a, it's a really good, simple, uh, foolproof way to add an extra battery. Um, another note I would like to add, um, whenever you're doing your batteries, whenever you're picking your batteries, of course you got to make sure that you pick the correct voltage for the, the receiver, make sure your receiver is capable of handling that voltage and make sure your servos are also capable of handling that voltage because pretty much whatever you put in to your receiver is going to go to your servos. So if you put in 7.4 volts and your receivers or your uh, servos are only good for 6 volts then you're going to wind up frying some servos. But make sure that whenever you pick your batteries they're the same chemistry uh, the same cell count, voltage, and the same milliamp hours. Um, for example, these right here, these are uh, just some uh, life batteries or lithium ferrite batteries, but you'll see they're the exact same battery. Best practice with that would be whenever you decide what battery you're going to get, just buy two of the same and maintain them the same way. If you, you know, drain them down and keep them on a storage charge, uh, you know, do the same thing for both of them so it'll keep them pretty equal um, so that you won't have one fail or one die prematurely due to lack of maintenance but anyway that's all I got that's the setup um, if you like what you see hit the subscribe button you know give me a thumbs up um, and uh, hit that uh, hit that bell and if you don't like it then you know hit the thumbs down but make sure you do it right and hit it twice until then, guys, I'll, uh, I'll see you later, and I'm going to be making some more videos on the redundant systems that I have found that may or may not work. I don't know. We'll, we'll talk about it then. But until then, I'll see you then.